The Saluki Standards Podcast is brought to you by McAllister's Deli in Carbondale, and they're famous for their sweet tea and their handcrafted sandwiches. They're located on East Main Street in Carbondale, 1382 East Main Street to be exact. McAllister's Deli in Carbondale, proud sponsor of the Saluki Standards Podcast. Saluki Standards, episode number 18. Hey there, everybody. I'm Connor Onion, and uh, our first NFL player on the pod this week. Salukis have a handful of guys in the NFL right now, and Craig James is one of them, a a two-year Saluki captain in 2017 as a senior, and Craig's now entering year number three in the NFL. Played one year with the Vikings as an undrafted free agent, and now is entering year two in Philadelphia with the Eagles. He's had to earn it, I'll tell you what. He's really had to earn it. Practice squad reps, cuts a couple of times, injuries, and some family hardship throughout his journey as well. And most of our conversation is about those things and representing the Salukis in the NFL. But first, Craig did address his identity as a black man and a black athlete. At the end of the day, I'm I'm a human being, man. At the end of the day, if I, you know, I seen I seen a tweet. He was like, "Man, I wish I wish you guys." And he's talking about fans. You know, I wish you guys loved me. You know, as much as you guys did when I was a college athlete. And that and that's real. Like even without the even without you know this situation, once athletes are done with their sports, you know, all that love is lost. You know, people don't come up to you like, "Oh man, great game!" Like, "Oh man, you're doing so good." All that love is lost. So like at the end of the day. Without the college sports, we're just human beings, man. Human to human, there's got to be more love, no matter what yeah. your job, no matter what your job no title what or job. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's let's talk about your journey uh, a little bit. And I got to be honest with you, man. You you broke my heart a little bit week four. I grew up a Packers <laughs> fan, <laughs> and and you had that game ceiling deflection on the goal line. Yeah. To win the game for your team. Uh, take me through that play. What'd you see on that play? Man, uh, during that play, it just happened so fast. Like, you know, we don't like the, the, the two yard line, you no know, goal line. And even in the goal line, red zone, everything happened so much faster. And I seen the route and I just reacted. I just react. Like I couldn't, I can't tell you any, any better. Like, I just reacted. And you know, Glory to God. Hey, I had the deflection. <laughs> like, when I deflected the ball, like, when I deflected the ball, like, I was looking up. I had nowhere where the ball – like, I knew nothing about the ball's whereabout. I didn't know where the ball was uh, until I looked, like, I looked down the field and Nigel – Nigel had the ball running. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> like, that's game. But, like, man, I, I was like – after the deflection, I was so clueless. I was like – Man, just looking for the ball. So, you had to have a pretty good idea that you had done your job well, though, right? Once oh you, yeah. Once you knew you got your hand on the ball. Oh yeah, like, uh, and it was just it was just crazy how that how that uh, I'm not gonna say how that week was going, but like the last two days, you know, before the game or game prep, um, like the night before the game, you know, I had you know you know coaches say phones off and everything and all that. Uh, you know, so I turned my phone on, uh, do not disturb or whatever and everything like, you know, everybody just does that. Uh, but I had an alarm set sometime that night for a Bible study <laughs> and that alarm went off during the meeting and like, man, the coach just, you know, Jim just ripped me a new one. And after I made that play, uh, you know, I go over to the sideline and like, next thing you know, he like, Jim's hugging me. He's like, you know what? That, that fine's taken care of. You're good. You're good. <laughs> You're good. That, 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 that deflection takes care of the fine. So yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was a pretty big moment for me. So 24 hours earlier, you're thinking, man, I'm in trouble. I might be riding the bench all night. <laughs> for sure, man. I was like, oh my God. Like, cause that's, that's, that's the worst. As a, as a player and your phone goes off in a meeting, Oh man, that's that's so bad, and because you know, like when it, even like in like a classroom setting, like everybody's looking around for the phone, and all the attention's on you. 
oh man, but yeah, like that just, you know, took the weight off my shoulders and man, it just felt good to even just go in that situation. Like, you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, in, at Green Bay. And then, you know, you come in the locker room with a victory, man, everybody celebrating, man, it's, it's a good feeling. Yeah, you think about the circumstances. You're at, at one of the most historic stadiums against a future Hall of Fame quarterback. And yeah. maybe maybe even more remarkably, I don't know how many people know this, that was the third defensive snap of your NFL career. I mean, yeah. you, you had spent a lot of time on special teams, but, yeah. I mean, you hadn't gotten a chance to play a lot of corner at that point. Why wasn't the moment too big, even though you were relatively new at it? You know, it's just... Times like that in football always come, you know, um, and you just got to step up to the plate. It's next man up mentality. Um, I remember, I remember for a situation, you know, even back in high school, you know, I kind of had a, I kind of had a situation like that. Um, my sophomore year, you know, just kind of get my feet wet on varsity, you know, doing, doing little things here and there. And, and we were playing Bevel East. And at that time, my brother was a senior, and and I remember we had a assistant coach. You know, he was kind of like a volunteer coach. And right before we stepped out on the field, he was like, "Hey, man, when you gonna get out your brother's shadow?" And that was it. You know, like that was like that game. It was just like I just stepped it up a notch. You know, um, you know, because you got to, you know, you, you got to win, you know, that's, that's your idea. That's your idea. Every time you step on the field and, and that game against Belleville East, I had, I think two interceptions and a, like a, I want to say about like around like a 60 yard reception for a TD. And I compare that to the green Bay game. Like there's no difference when your name is called, you have to shine. And that's, I mean, that's what you did in that spot too. I mean, you, you had a, a scary injury to one yeah. of your teammates, you know, yeah. guys are, guys are down on a knee praying around him, hoping that he's going to be okay. And, and ultimately that's part of what forces you into the game mm -hmm. mentally. How do you stay locked in? Even though one of your guys is down there on the field injured. It's tough. Cause at the time, you know, you care about the teammate, you know, you, you care about his well being. And, you know, on the other side of it, you got your football mentality. You say, next play mentality, next play. The next play, I'm up. <laughs> so it's like you can't, you can't, you know, dread on it too long as your teammate, but like, and then you, you know, you do the play, but then you like at the end, you know, you come back and then all your feelings for your teammate come back, you know, because you st at the end, of, you still got to get your job done. So. When when you're waiting for that time, I mean, three three and a half quarters are going by. You're you're waiting for your moment to get in there and, and get your <laughs> licks in. Does your mind drift at all? Uh, not really. Um, because the whole during the whole game, uh, DB coach was telling me, Craig, you can go in anytime. You know, be ready. Da da da. This and that. This that and the third. So I mean, the whole game, like I'm just. I'm like a little puppy dog, just trailing behind the coach, you know, waiting to go in. Uh, and then, you know, just being on special teams, make, doing those plays on special teams, helping me out, you know, keeps you, keeps you locked into the game. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to stay locked in for that long. You know, you're ready to go on defense. You're ready to go on defense, ready to go on defense, ready to go on defense, three quarters pass. And you're like, dang, I just, I just guess I'm not going to get in, you know, but you still have to like, you have to check yourself, like, you know, just be ready, you know. I'm, I'm sure there's this apprehension of, you know, am I going to get into the game? Am I, am I yeah. getting into the game? And then, then you go have a big moment. You guys win the game, <laughs> as you mentioned, on a big stage against a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, take me through that, that locker room post game. What are you, what are you feeling uh, after that big moment? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was ecstatic. Like, everybody, like, before that moment, I feel like I was just kind of like a – like, no, you know, people, people were cool. You know, people knew me, uh, people would acknowledge me, but I just felt like I was kind of like a face in a locker room, you know? And, you know, after that play, it was just like Craig James this, Craig James that, you know, my, 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 my Instagram is blowing up. My Twitter is blowing up. 
um, it was it was a great feeling. You know, like I say, like when you get into that locker room after a huge win, after a, a, a tough opponent, it's just it just feels great to you know go home with that victory. I remember there was a, I think it was even an ESPN storyline after that game that was like, it said like Craig James, and then in parentheses it said who? Yeah. May have just saved the Eagles season. And, and, and all of us in Southern Illinois are going, we know who Craig James is. <laughs> Come on, man. For sure. No, man, it was like, to be honest with you, like I don't even, I don't even watch ESPN like that. But like people were like, showing me all this and like I just I had to watch it after people like you know reposting it and everything uh but yeah like it was just it was kind of weird just you know seeing my face on a, on a, on you know nationally televised and like so every, like everybody in the world was like really like kind of like seeing my face or everybody in America is like seeing my face it was you know it was just kind of weird but uh hey that that comes with the game that comes with the lifestyle yeah, well, well, very well earned. Want to get into your <laughs> want to get into your story a little bit. I mean, just just before we dive into anything real specific, just to give people an idea of of what you've gone through. I mean, a couple injuries in college, yeah. cut a couple of times the NFL, playing on special teams, playing on practice squad, and then you then you have that moment. Um, but I, I kind of want to go back to to the beginning. You mentioned having a big brother. Yeah, um, yeah. How do you, how do you think that? upbringing of, of being the younger brother has, has helped you, um, through some of the things you've been through. Um, it's just, you know, having a big brother, and I, I feel like almost everybody that, you know, has siblings, they're probably like the youngest sibling can kind of relate. Um, you have, you kind of have no choice, but to look up to that person, you know, cause, cause, if they're doing it, you most likely want to do it. And that's, and that starts at a young age. Uh, you know, my brother, unfortunately, like it's, it's only me and my brother. So my brother looked up to our older cousin and like, that was like, you know, his idol, like his big brother. So like, he was kind of like following after his footsteps. So, so I would follow after my brother's footsteps and it would just be kind of like a competition. You know, if he does something like this, you know, I want to do it, but I want to do it better. You know, my brother was one of the, was probably one of the fastest guys to ever come through at high school. And then two years later, I mean, like, you know, we got to go to high school together, uh, but you know, I want to be, the, you know, if he's the fastest, I want to break all his records. I want to be the fastest, you know? Um, but if it Without my brother, like I probably wouldn't even be the football player I am today. Uh, you know, he played mainly offense. He was a receiver, and in high school, even in college, you know, we'll 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 go against each other. You know, perfect each other's crafts and make each other better. Um, and that just plays a huge aspect. You know, he gave me some advice. You know, and I will also watch him. You know. During, during some of his times of struggle, you know, and I would learn from his, you know, experience. So I would have a different experience or make a, you know, better choice or whatnot. You, you mentioned you guys got a chance to play with each other at Edwardsville. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when you were the young guy playing there, there for the Tigers, um, uh-huh. I mean, how much did you feel like you had to prove yourself so that you weren't just – your brother's little brother. Yeah. Uh, I felt like I had to prove myself a lot. Like, um, going into high school, I kind of felt a lot of pressure and I felt like I had to, I had to do good. I had to either be as good as my brother or better, you know, or if, if I didn't, I felt like I would have been a, you know, I would, would have been, would have been a bust, you know, didn't end up being one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, there, there are so many connections that you have to, to our fans in our region. I feel like just, you, you grew up in, in the Southern Illinois region in mm-hmm. Edwardsville. And a- another connection is that you were first recruited to Minnesota yeah. by, by Jerry Kill, the former head coach of the Saluki program, former athletic director here. Uh, what was your first interaction with coach Kill? 
my first, I don't know if I can remember my first interaction, but like the vibe, like I can just tell you a vibe, like every time I'm around Coach Kill, it's just like love. Like he genuinely loves his players. Like, and even even his wife, even even Mama Kill, like I just got a, I just tweeted on my birthday, like a text she sent me, like she sends me a text every year on my birthday. I'm like, man, like, how do you still remember my birthday? Like, it's been so, it's, I haven't been in, I haven't been in University of Minnesota for what, about, what, five, four or five years? I'm like, man, like, that's just like, it's just genuine love. And like, they genuinely care about everybody and anybody. So it was, man, like, when I committed up here, it's just, I, I, I already knew, I already knew this was going to be my, my home, you know? Like, obviously, I didn't have no thoughts about transferring, but, like, I just knew, like, Minnesota was the place. Everybody that plays for Coach Kill has at least one good classic <laughs> coach <laughs> story. you yeah. playing for him. What's, uh, uh, what's yours? <laughs> I could probably think of a few, but the one that comes to mind, man, we were, we were, um, we were in season. And I guess – I don't know if we won or lost the game before, but, man, Coach Kill was so mad. He was so mad. He's like – he came in he, uh, after practice. He's like, you know what? That's soft. That's ice cream soft. Dairy cream ice cream soft. Man, and after like, – everybody, like – if I pull up to one of my old teammates and I'm like, and I say that's Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen ice cream soft, they all know what I'm talking about. They all know what I'm talking about. That's that's something you probably got in the back of your head now. No. If, uh, <laughs> if you're not acting right on the field. No, yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure, man. Well, you spent two years up there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Coach Kill ultimately, um, you know, moves on um, and and you, you play your freshman and sophomore season there. Um, I, I want to go specifically to the time your sophomore year, you got your leg injury. Yeah. Um, I mean, how much does that impact the ultimate decision to, to come to SIU and, and start a new career down here? Uh, it actually impacts it a lot. Um, going into my sophomore year, um, you know, I had, you know, my opportunity to play more, you know, raised up tremendously. Uh, not only was I the, the starting punt returner, but, you know, my defensive reps were going to go up crazy. And the third, fourth game, well, I played, you know, I played, no, the second game I played nickel against Colorado State, a little bit of nickel, like towards like second half. And in the fourth game against University of Northwestern, I started corner because we started, you know, we started that game in a, in a nickel package, in a sub package. So I was starting and like, I know my reps were going to go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. And unfortunately, the start of the second half, you know, Northwestern's kicking off the ball. I'm on, I'm on KOR, I'm on the front line. They kick it short. And as I'm trying to block this guy that's probably like 225 against my buck 85, buck 80, <laughs> you know, he drives me back a little bit and our player just runs up right behind me. And I'm like, I just knew, I just knew something wasn't right. Um, I tried to run it off. I just thought it was a bruise. You know, next thing you know, they say, you know, you got a fracture. And when you get injured, like just, just my mindset, knowing I was going to play that year and I was supposed to, you know, you know, that was, I wouldn't necessarily say, necessarily say my breakout year, but you know, that was the kind of year I'll really get a name for myself. Um, uh, it, it affects you big time. Um, a lot of, you know, when you're hurt in your mind, you feel like the coaches think like are soft. <laughs> you think like in your mind, you're like, man, I got to hurry up and do something. You know, these coaches think, you know, um, either you think coaches think you're faking it or people think you're faking it. Or like I say, like you're soft. Um, 
So, you know, they still, they told me about like, I think 46 weeks, 46 weeks came, you know, felt pretty good. You know, I was running on an ultra G that was a little gravity treadmill and, you know, they put me out there on the field and I could run, but stopping was a problem. Uh, so, and then after I knew, stop, after I knew I couldn't stop or de- decelerate properly or cut, I, I personally, I knew it was over. Um, and then on top of that, on top of the injury, I knew, I knew I was out for the year. They told me, you know, on top of the injury, you know, had some family situations. Mom thought she was sick. And now all that is, you know, turning in my head, like, I can't be here hurt and my mom thinks she's sick after I just lost my uncle my freshman year. You know, my uncle was like my father figure. Um, so all that is turning in my head. And that's that's a hey, that was that was the final that was the final straw. Like after my mom told me she was sick, you know, she thought she was sick. That was the final straw. It was I was like, yeah, man, I just gotta be I gotta be closer to home just for the simple fact. You know, if another situation like my uncle passing happens again, man, that uh, with with, with all that, that explains your Twitter handle, doesn't it? Yeah, that, one, of, that one of one of one of God's soldiers. I mean, yeah. I mean that that is a lot in what like six months, maybe less yeah. than six months. You're going through all that at the same time. Yeah, it was it was it was a, it was a lot, and like my my uncle was like the backbone of the family. He was like the backbone of like everything, everything, you know, that was done or, or, or said, like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say it was ran through him, but like, you know, he was, you know, he was the person you go to if you had troubles or you, he'd be the one to give you advice. And, and then on top of that, like, everybody in my family has cancer. Like, like my, my aunt, both my aunts had cancer. My grandma had cancer. My uncle had uh, colon cancer. And that only leaves my other uncle and my mom that don't have it. So like when my mom got sick and like, she thought she, she had it. I'm like, bro, I I can't (laughs) like, I would, I would be so mad at myself, you know, if I wasn't, if I wasn't there during my mom's time to eat. Um, yeah. Did you know that Southern Illinois university, awards students $10 million annually in scholarships, has test optional admission, and in-state tuition for all U.S. residents. SIU offers hands-on, career-focused learning in every major, which are supported by internships and community service and the potential for study abroad and more. Southern Illinois has faculty who bring real-world experience to the classroom and the classroom into the real world. See what SIU can do for you at the next open house. Registration and info at siu.edu slash open house. Exploring options. That's a Saluki. So, I mean, that that obviously leads to your transfer to SIU. Who who helps make that happen? Obviously, your your mom is the driving force behind your decision, but is it Coach Clay's calling? Is it Coach Kill calling? Uh, I mean, who's who's helping you get to SIU? Well, uh, it was – so it was a coach, um, Melvin. Uh, what's Melvin's last name? I can't think of. He's at Temple right now. He's a DB coach at Temple. So Melvin was a GA at Minnesota when I was there my uh, freshman year, and I think he left my sophomore year. And when I was transferring, he was he was he was like really one of like the first coaches to call me. But he was at Semo at first. And then he left SEMO and he was about to be the DB coach at Carbondale. So when I was working out at Edwardsville High School and, you know, him and Coach Hill come and walk in and, you know, off rip, I was like, yeah, like I, I, would, I would like to go to Carbondale, you know. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to sit out. Like I had the opportunity to, you know, uh, my coach, my high school coach, Coach Pick, he gave me the, he told me the opportunities. Like you know, uh, you got Iowa, Iowa State coach that just went to Arkansas. You know, they want to pick you up. You just have to do a do a semester of JUCO, or whatever. I didn't want to do that because I knew it was going to be it was going to be trouble for me. You know, just to stay at home, I'll have to get a job. I didn't have a car and work out and try to find everything else. I wanted to get in school like as fast as I could. So. 
So therefore, you know, I made a decision to go to Carbondale, and I think it was a pretty good decision. What did you think of Coach Hill when you met him? Coach Hill, um, well, he kind of let he kind of let Melvin do all the talking. You know, like if if a coach has a relationship, you know, with a player, you know, you probably let that let let that coach do uh, most of the talking. But um, when he was talking to me, and when I finally got to sit down with him. His plans to change around, you know, change the um, the program. I liked it. Like, you know, he had one rule it was to be a man. And at the end of the day, that's that's what you got to live by. Um, unfortunately, you know, the turnaround didn't happen as fast as we wanted to. But, you know, two years later, you know, you know, two years later, here comes Jeremy Chen, you know, senior, you know, all those guys, you know, they making the turnaround, you know. So I mean, it's turning around, and I I, I love to see it because we had we had so many plans, you know, when we were there to turn it around and everything. But you know, I I love to see you know SIU doing good right now. I mean, you look back. I mean, we're what three four years removed from your first year at SIU. Yeah. I, now you look back, you've got three guys in that defensive backfield in the NFL. Yeah. You got you, you've got Jeremy Chin, you've got Ryan Neal, all getting NFL opportunities. Uh, I mean, what was it like to be in that room with those guys? And, and what did you take away from, from having a couple of other NFL guys in there with you? Man, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. You know, all those guys, all those guys are characters. Uh, when, when Chin, I'm going to tell you this, when, when us as upperclassmen seeing Jeremy Chin touch the field, and scrimmage and play, hands down, you can probably ask anybody. And like, first of all, like when we seen his size too, because he came in as a corner, but like when we seen him play, everybody knew Chen was league bound. Everybody knew it. I don't care who you were, I don't care if you played or if you just a fan on the sideline, like you just knew. And, you know, with Ryan, you know, with Ryan, like Ryan was just, you know, a go getter, like a workhorse, like he knew his stuff. He, you know, if if I needed help on the defense or anything, you know, he'd help me out. And you know, Ryan would take every opportunity, you know, and use it to the fullest. So it was it, it was great to be in that room. And to be honest with you, to be honest with you, it's probably even some DBs that probably transferred. You know, um, I could probably see them. You know in the league in a couple of years, a couple of years from now, or, you know, next year or whatnot. But <laughs> I would, I mean, is it, is it safe to, is it safe to say that SIU is a, you know, a, a, a small DBU? Is, is it safe? <laughs> is it safe to say that? I think so. I mean, <laughs> you know, you got, you got three DBs, what, in, what, in two years, two years, three years in the, in the league. So, Yeah. You're not saying, but you're kind of saying you might have started a little something. No, I'm not. I'm not saying I started it, but <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to give people a, an idea. I did briefly before on you know just all that transpired um, to to finally be somewhat of an NFL regular. Um, mm -hmm. You have a hamstring injury, so you miss pro day. You go. You go undrafted. And then you have to uh, go to what is essentially a, a tryout yeah. with the Vikings to get that opportunity. Uh -huh. uh, through all that, uh, where was where was or what was your level of faith that you would get an opportunity to be an NFL player? It was man, my faith was man. It was just through the roof, you know. Um, I had like, you know, I was projected, you know, my number wise, I felt like I was projected, you know, to do great things on my pro day. Um, unfortunately, like you say, I had no numbers. And as a player, having no numbers, you know, going into, you know, the draft and you just got nothing, that's, that, that sucks, you know. Uh, like a few days, I'll probably say like three weeks, three weeks after the pro day, I was probably like 90, 85 to 90%. And I went to a CFL tryout, you know, and off rip, you know, I did well to CFL tryout, you know, 
like I say, I was like 80, 95%. Uh, they wanted to sign me then. They wanted to sign me then and there. And a couple of weeks later, they sent me the contract. And when I, when I got the contract, I was at my high school uh, inter- doing an internship. And, you know, I was excited. I was about to call my brother, call my mom. Yo, I got this contract. I'm going to sign it. Well, my agent calls me. You know, gear up. You know, we're going, we going to bike and try out. And when I heard that, it was just like, man, this is just another opportunity. Um, when I when I got when I got out here for you know it felt it felt good to come back. You know I haven't been I, I, didn't, I haven't been back in Minnesota for a minute. It just felt good to be back. You know I can, I probably I visited some of my friends up here as well. Um, and during the time of the tryout, in my mind I was just you know I was just thinking have fun. Uh, I didn't want to be too hard on myself. I didn't want to be too hard on myself because I knew if I was, I would, you know, you know, it would be too much, it would be too much pressure on myself and you're, and you're your own worst critic. So I knew I, if I just had fun and played the game, I love everything would work out. And fortunately enough, out of that tryout, you know, they, they picked up four guys and I was lucky enough to be one of them. Um, and then, and then, then you end up being what two of the four that actually ends up on the yeah. active roster at, at some point. Yeah. That was, and that was big too. Um, you know, during, uh, like during that, you know, during camp, you know, working towards that, you know, I kind of felt, I, I fell kind of in a, in a hole. Uh, like, you know, how I said, uh, during, during the trial saying not to be too hard on myself. So, well, after I made the team, you know, I was like, okay, I'm an undrafted free agent. I have to do everything right because they can cut me at any time. They have no money invested into me. They don't mind if they lose me and all this, all this and that. So I was kind of hard on myself, you know, and I had to, you know, I had to come back and remember, you know, just Craig, just have fun. You know, I, had to call, I called my mom, you know, we prayed about it and everything. And like, after that, I was good. Like it didn't matter to me if I got cut at that point, like just have fun. You know, this is the game you love, you know, I was fortunate enough to get this far. Um, so from then, from that point on, I was just like, man, I'm just about to have fun with this and, you know, just ride the roller coaster as long, you know, as long as it's going on. Well, you, you had to wait a couple months to actually debut in a game, but <laughs> you know, December 2nd, 2018, I, I'm sure that's a date you're going to remember for a long time. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm Bro, I'm I'm gonna tell my great grandkids about this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you're not gonna be able to tell me nothing, man. I swear. Your your NFL debut. I mean, you talk about like like kind of like the American dream. You get to debut yeah. against the New England Patriots, right? Yeah. I mean, how how badly did you, as a, a defensive back, want to get a shot at Tom Brady? Oh, I wanted to get in real bad. Like, but like it was like you know, but it was also talks. Like my coach was like. Like that that practice, that week of practice, like I was also practicing like with first team, second team, you know, ready to get in at DB just in case anything happened. Because even at Minnesota, you know, we had some DB injuries. But I was just, I mean, I was ready. I think I was probably more nervous then, way more nervous then than the Green Bay game. Uh, just for the simple fact, you know, it's like, you know, it's my rookie year, you know, this, you know, this is, you know, the big deal. This time Brady, this is the big goat. <laughs> but, uh, no, like them giving me the position of just doing special teams. I think it was, it was good. Uh, it gave me the opportunity to just go out there and play. You know, special teams, special teams, you can just go out there and play. I mean, you obviously have to know what's going on, what, you know, what scheme y'all doing. But when the ball is snapped, you just playing. You ain't got to think about uh, post snap things like routes and stuff like that. So that, that most definitely helped me um, get in the mindset of being out there on that big stage. So you, you got a little bit of a, a taste of the NFL that first year with, you know, playing in, in a couple of games on special teams. Then this past year, you, you get to play in, in 14 games. You, you get some regular, some more regular snaps on defense. Mm-hmm. Do you feel established now? No. Like you're in this? No? No. You, no, you still I mean, got more to give. Yeah, I feel – I still – the way I think of things, and I've always thought of things like this, like, man, I feel like I'm at the bottom of the totem pole every time. 
just just for the simple fact I, I can like when I'm out there like I know I'm clawing I'm grinding I'm just trying to get to the top and that that's what keeps me motivated because and I always I always feel like like I say I'm at the bottom of the totem pole and then I feel like people always count me out I feel like that even in high school you know I might have yeah I might have been one of, you know one of the best DBs in the area, but I, just, I always felt like I was at the bottom. I, I never wanted to get that big head and be complacent and, you know, just be like, oh, yeah, I'm good enough. I never wanted to get like that. And um, they always ask me, I always get, you know, the reporters from home ask me the same thing every year. Um, like, like they say, do you have, do you have, are you established? I'm like, no, nah. I'm like, it restarts every year because every year they're looking for somebody to replace you. They're looking for somebody better. You know, that goes for college and, and NFL. Like I have, I have a goal every year when I, uh, for the season, uh, my, my goal, my rookie year, make 53 man roster. Going in the second year, make 53 man roster. Then I add another goal on my second year, make 53 man roster and become a starter on defense. Okay, I started one game. I'm like, I started one game, you know, against against uh, Jets, but I still have for this year become a starter because I haven't solidified myself as a starter, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of keep me motivated and just keep on going, keep on pushing. I gotta say, I checked out what what your team, the Eagles, did on draft night. They had ten picks, mm-hmm. didn't pick any cornerbacks, so they yeah. must feel, they must feel pretty good about <laughs> what you guys got going in that room right now. Yeah, uh, hey, it's it's some kindling in that room. Uh, I like I like the group of guys we got, uh, and I, I have faith in every one of them. Uh, I feel like if the job needs to be done, we all we will all get the job done. Let's uh, let's close with this. Uh, what's the biggest perk of being an NFL player? Man, I don't know. I just like literally just like a month ago, I realized like it, it finally hit me that I'm in the NFL. Like, like it just, it's like, I, I really don't know. Uh, man, I mean, it's just, I guess that, that would probably be the biggest part finally realizing when I'm in the NFL, like, you know, everything I've done just to get to this point, um, you know, to get my, my own home, you know, to, 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 you know, be able to provide for my family, you know, and just to, see my family like excited for me, you know, cause they know how hard I work for it. Um, yeah, that, that has to be probably the biggest part. You've got, uh, you've got quite the journey to, to share with people. So that's pretty neat, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That, that's, that's, um, I feel like that's one of my reasons I'm even here on this earth. I feel like God put me on this earth to, you know, to share my testimony with other people. Uh, you know, because it might provide hope for them, you know, it might help them out during their situation. So, well, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're, uh, you're making people proud down here. I know that. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. I'll have it no other way.